Butterflies, it's Amanda Jean here again with another video and today I'll be reviewing Seeing Through Blindness by Matt Harris and also the author has kindly said he will give away a few copies of his book. Please be sure to watch the whole video for details on how to enter the giveaway. I know Matt personally and he kindly gave me a copy of his book to read and review here on YouTube. So with that, let's jump in to the review. This book talks about Matt's life from the time he was a young boy until he was in his early 20s and it talks about his struggles with drugs and alcohol and how he had problems with the police and how he had an undiagnosed eye condition called retinitis pigmentosis, RP for short, and how he struggled during his life and how that impacted his life. So let's dive in a little bit deeper on some of the things that really caught my attention for the book. In this part of the book, Matt has a high school sweetheart and this is what happened. A page soon turned in our relationship, however, when after dinner one night the phone rang. Hello, I answered. It was Janie. What's up, I asked. And don't tell me heaven like you always do. Will you come over and pick me up? We need to talk, she said grimly. Uh-oh, I thought. As she said, I'll be right over. She met me in her driveway as I pulled in. What's the matter, I asked. Just drive, she ordered, while getting into the passenger's side. Tears can never be a good sign, I thought. As she cried while I drove to Fort Smallwood Park, where we could talk interrupted, I'm pregnant, Matt, two months. She told me as soon as I turned off the engine, a frightful chill wrapped its arms around me, like it was December rather than June. I hugged her and felt warmth, but still wished I had stopped at the liquor store before even even having picked Janie up. I wanted to become honors queen at Job's daughter's. I was next in line, she cried, but honors queens are supposed to be virgins. Since pregnancy opposes the moral code, if I keep the baby, I'm disqualified. If you keep the baby, what do you mean if? It's a life is more important than some club. Please, Jeannie, tell me you believe that too. All I know is I love you and I want this baby. We can get married and I can start working my way up at your dad's company. I won't let this, I won't let my blindness mess that up. I promised myself, as Janie said, you're right, Matt, but my parents think otherwise. You know how involved my father is with the Masons and how important the status of Honors Queen is to him. But it's a hypocritical Janie, can't you see that? Even if you wasn't pregnant, you still not, you're still not a virgin, and the fact alone disqualifies you anyway. Yeah, but they don't know won't hurt them. And besides, my parents think I'm too young. That, to me, is so great that Matt wanted to step up and help take care of this baby. That just shows that he has good moral standards. And I'm proud of him for wanting to help this young girl with the baby, even though she didn't keep it. The second part in this book that caught my attention was how bad Matt had it with drugs. Um, in this book, he ended up using PC PCP. And this is what happened. He uh, was out one night and his dad came and picked him up and this is what happened. And later I entered through my front door. My skin fell as if it was slipping from my bones, believing in my head I had died. When a friend unspurred from my soul, my body, he brought me to the gates of Hades where I saw myself lying in a casket, my fingers folded as in prayer. At my viewing, my mother collapsed my cold hands as she wept. I hovered above the coffin and hollered, I'm not dead, Mom, I'm right here. As I touched her shoulder, trying to console her, 
She did not acknowledge me at all, still clutching the silent hands of her dead son. That just goes to show how bad drugs can mess you up. In fact, Matt did go to court um, for having PCP um, and he had to stand before a judge and luckily he didn't go to jail. But <laughs> drugs can really hurt your future. And it's through God's wonderful gift of salvation that Matt was able to turn his life around and turn to Jesus. And that leads to my last point. And this actually was the part of the book that actually made me cry. When I finished, I, I cried because I felt that Matt was so lucky to meet Jesus. On December 12, 1982, I began my journey towards my Lord, but later learned it was his father through whom he had draw, been draw, drawing me towards his son. On that Sunday morning, six inches of snow blanketed the earth like a polar bear's hide. It was, in, it was the day of my salvation, I knew. And then Matt goes on to say, And when the invitation from the pulpit came, I sprang from my hellish ditch, dashing down the aisle towards the front of the church. I want to get saved, Pastor, I cried out. A deacon named Wayne Foyer walked over, shook my hand, and led me in prayer, in which I repented of my sin, asking Lord Jesus to come in. At that moment, I was born again, God giving me his gift of eternal life. And in the back of his book, Matthew offers a way to accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior. And if you wish to receive this free gift, you can pray the simple prayer and mean it in your heart. Dear Jesus, I know I am a sinner and would be lost in hell without you. Please forgive me for my sins and come into my life. I believe that you died on the cross for my sins, and that God, your Father, raised you from the dead. Thank you, Jesus, for giving me your free gift of eternal life. Amen. And butterflies, if you like, would like a copy of this book, please be sure to go check out my blog and enter the giveaway by leaving a comment by following Matt's instructions. And please be aware, you must be a US resident to enter the giveaway. If you like this review, please be sure to like, comment, share, and subscribe. And butterflies, I want you to stay positive, fly high, and I will see you next time.